Well, hello, and uh, my name is Adrian Potts from Applied Graphene Materials. I'm the CEO um, of the company, and joining me today is David Blaine, my Chief Financial Officer, and we're here to talk about our interim results. So we're pleased to be able to report our, our, um, our interim results, and the overarching uh, strap line for these results is that we're making some great progress um, as market leader for graphene dispersions and application technology in the spaces that we are operating in. Um, just to give you a little bit of background to uh, myself um, on slide three of the slide deck. Um, uh, again, as I mentioned before, I'm Chief Executive Officer of, uh, of AGM. I became CEO in 2018, having joined the company in 2015. And my background is from the materials technology industry, principally in the area of carbon fibre composites. Um, my background is in strategy development and business turnarounds and the whole um, the whole business of integrating uh, new technology into uh, new applications. Uh, David, if you want to just give a bit of background uh, for yourself, that would be great. So I joined, Adri um, joined Adrian at uh, AGM in October of 2018. I joined from Lenoco, um, PL Group PLC. I've been involved with public companies since 1994, so I've got lots of experience of all the different things that happen in PLCs, um, and particularly working with small technology startup businesses. So moving through the deck, um, we'll uh, touch on the, on the highlights um, on each slide, uh, just to give you the overview of the interim. So on slide four, um, just a brief company overview for those of you who don't know us. Um, Really, the key differentiator for our company is that we are a leading innovator of taking graphene, um, a material that we manufacture that you may have heard of, and putting that into materials that are uh, then easy to use in customers' end-use applications. We call those graphene dispersions, and we manufacture those at our plant in Redcar in the northeast of England. Um, the other differentiator, rather than just manufacturing materials and putting them into dispersion, is the application technology. And hopefully you will um, hear a lot more about that during this uh, presentation and briefing. Uh, the application technology uh, that goes with that, as well as the dispersion technology and the manufacturing uh, of our materials, um, is of course covered by uh, several patent um, to protect our IP. Uh, what that looks like in practical terms is, is all about expertise and all about know-how. Um, the key objective of what we're doing is to take graphene materials and meet the primary challenge of incorporating those materials into end-use products and through that uh, achieving performance enhancements uh, with those materials. So if you look at our prime space of operating in the coatings sector for industrial applications, typically that would be adding graphene through a media that is easy to use and then seeing an end use performance enhancement in that coating. The product offering that we have is basically, so what you can buy from us is basically easy to use uh, dispersed graphene materials in a range of different materials, different solvents, uh, different resins to enable the end user to take those materials and add them to their product formulations. Key to this is, and critical for successful outcomes, is uh, in-depth technical data. So if you were to visit our facility, you would see a, a, a huge amount of testing that goes on to be able to provide proven data that basically says our product works in this application. And alongside that, we're able to supply a lot of practical guidance on how to use this new technology in the customer's end use formulation. In terms of activity, um, it's all based around long range customer collaborations that we're really pleased to see are now resulting in increased product launches and uh, the end objective of sales momentum and revenue growth within the company. 
Um, those engagements, those customer collaborations really require a, a deep understanding and a deep need to both understand the commercial aspects of what a customer is looking for, as well as the technical um, aspects that they are looking to achieve. So overall, we're really pleased to be able to report strong progress in our three core sectors. I mentioned protective coatings earlier. Uh, secondly, composite materials. And then thirdly, what we call functional materials. The majority of our activity is in the coatings sector currently. Just to touch on slide five, and um, we're aware of the remarkable performance, and it's been well reported, the remarkable performance that single layer uh, graphene materials have to offer. And, um, you know, it's, it's all about how to realize that performance in practical material solutions. So how to realize that, how to take the product in an industrial format and apply it to the sectors that we operate in. And it's been well said by the Graphene Council at the bottom right of this slide that that engagement is all about uh, uh, selecting the right type of material, the right class of material at a certain commercial point um, to the specific application that uh, is of interest and then seeking to achieve those performance objectives in a uh, in a meaningful way, in a way that is easy for the customer to be able to adopt the material. So that's the essence of what we're all about, deep engagements commercially and technically. And to the point above the, the quote from the Graphene Council, as I mentioned before, that involves rigorous and time intensive testing. Um, to enable that successful transfer of uh, properties of the graphene into the end use applications. So at AGM on slide six, we see ourselves as ideally placed to meet the challenge with the unique offer that we have for product technology. The means of delivery is, as I mentioned earlier, through dispersed materials. Um, so taking our graphene and putting them into other products that are a, a vehicle to deliver uh, graphene technology into the end user application. Um, the focus is very much on application and the differentiators that set AGM apart um, are really the application technology. So a clear understanding of the end user's need and the roadmap on how to achieve that. So a deep engagement with the end customer, understanding their objectives and the needs both technically and commercially and then um, to really format that in a way that is uh, useful for the end customer and that goes along two different routes. First of all a standardized set of product offerings that has broad appeal to a range of applications and then also of course we're able to customize those solutions to specific customer end use applications. So standardized products we see as really the the key focus. We've achieved that with a great product range um, of standardized dispersions. That's been our focus and where we've kind of checked that box. We've achieved those for a broad range application uh, set of, uh, of opportunities. We see that as a key lever through the early adopters that we um, that we've talked about often and we'll touch on today. Um, those early adopters we've done the hard miles with in terms of proving the technology, in terms of bringing new products to market through our customers. But having those standardized dispersions now really opens the opportunity for a much broader engagement with a larger number of customers. So we see that as a great place to be. Um, and then thirdly, the point on this slide is all about data. So how to data. So what we call how to or enabling data to really enable the um, the end customer to really understand how to utilize our material and the level of support that we supply. We see as, as really second to none in the industry. Um, a lot of guidance notes, a lot of data, a lot of proof that our product works in the customer's envisaged application. So what that looks like in terms of our business model on slide seven really is geared around proven data that that 
uh, drives every aspect of what we do, that that delivers performance, that that enables the end customer to deliver product launches and ultimately will deliver sales. So you see some of those markers there on this slide. So the G Enable product range are delivering 5,000 hours or a five times improvement in anti-corrosion performance for paints and coatings. What does that look like in practical terms can easily be extrapolated into life extension for both the coating and the part that is coated. So if you look at an automotive application, right the way through an industrial application, right the way through a harsh environment application, such as you might find offshore in oil and gas or marine or with wind turbine towers, for example, um, where corrosion is a major, major issue, um, we see life extension for those uh, components with the potential for adding graphene to coatings and the potential for cost reduction for asset owners in that the life is extended um, before corrosion really starts to set in. Um, a second marker would be in the realm of anti-corrosion primers and a good example of that is with the Heiko product where we saw an extension of life from around 250 hours for the standard product out to about 1750 hours. So a great reminder of the utility and performance advantages that graphene can bring in these formatted products. In the world of composites, remarkable improvements in things like fracture toughness. So what does that translate to in real terms? We see that as being a great opportunity to extend the life of composite parts. And there's a great demonstrator that we have included in this presentation to illustrate that. And then fourthly, um, low density thermal conductivity adhesives. So using graphene to enhance the thermal conductivity of adhesives to achieve lighter weight and improve performance against current benchmark materials. As I mentioned, we operate in four um, focused areas, so coatings and barrier and anti-corrosion uh, performance enhanced products in the world of composites and adhesives and elastomers, and then in an area that we call functional materials, such as the adhesive that I just mentioned for space applications. And then fourthly, taking graphene in a printing format to, um, to enhance the performance of materials. So it's all about delivery, first of all, of uh, performance and the performance enhancement that graphene can bring, the realization of that performance with our customers, and then to see product launches coming to reality that ultimately will be the platform to lead to sales. And we see substantial opportunities in each of those markets that we operate in. So highlights for the period. Uh, on slide eight, we see now uh, large scale product launches really starting to happen. You can see real progress being made uh, principally in the area of coatings, but uh, some great activity in composites also. So just to talk to some of these, and we've divided this into two really. Firstly, for the mass market, we've been really pleased um, in the period to see product launches under the High Coat brand. These are available now in the mainstream market for um, on the Amazon platform, as well as the Tetrasil Express web platform. And then um, in the retail sector, we've been really pleased to see an aerosolized uh, graphene product, um, a primer product in the Halfords product range. So uh, that is available in retail in the UK through the Halfords stores and on the Halfords website. So great to see some product launches um, in the mass market arena. And then secondly, in terms of specialist um, applications for coatings technologies, companies like All Times Coatings have now launched a product called Advantage Graphene, which is a liquid coating system principally for the construction industry. Um, their target market is roofing and siding for uh, buildings whereby um, this product gives an enhanced anti-corrosion performance um, for their product and they are now offering unparalleled 30-year warranty uh, with their product. So again, a great testament to what graphene can do 
in the coating sector for specialist applications. And then latterly, um, another coatings innovator called Bloxil, um, who we've been working with, and as I mentioned before, doing the hard miles with to get products to market and produce demonstrator technology that will broaden the platform of opportunity for the future. So with Bloxel, um, their product uh, Top Coat MT is designed for harsh environment applications uh, of the type that I described earlier, both industrial and further afield um, into uh, some of the offshore type applications. Um, again, as an anti-corrosion material, so a protective coating that uh, works well along with other materials to enable um, enhanced anti-corrosion protection. We've been really pleased that that product was launched, uh, first of all, but then great to see industrial applications where this product has become specified. And we're really excited to uh, look forward to where this leads in terms of product application, product use in real settings. Um, that product's been specified for satellite communications uh, dish structures currently uh, with Avanti PLC. And we're really looking forward to um, forward traction as that, uh, that project starts to gain traction. In the world of composites, not to underplay our involvement there, um, we've been making some great progress with composite materials as well. The, uh, the marker uh, mentioned at the bottom of slide eight uh, covers a demonstrator um, assembly that we have been able to um, produce in tandem with our uh, composite partners, um, CTES Limited, so Composite Tooling and Engineering Solutions Limited, and then SHD Composites in the UK, who are a materials manufacturer. So here we've been able to produce a demonstrator forming fixture or a mold tool that is manufactured from carbon fiber and incorporates graphene into that. I mentioned before the performance advantages that graphene brings into composite structures um, such as improved fracture toughness leading to the potential for uh, extra longevity or life to those composite parts. In this particular application the demonstrator um, takes adding graphene um, with ease of application into a real composite structure, um, in this case a forming tool, but that technology could easily be applied into mainstream structural materials as well. So that now that that has been built, uh, that is being uh, used as a, as a platform for engagement with uh, a range of materials manufacturers as well as end users in the tooling sector. We're also seeing good traction in a couple of other areas as well with repeat customers uh, in the mass transit market. So for seat structures and sidewall structures, uh, such as you would find in aircraft or trains. And then also in the world of space exploration, um, we have a nice repeat customer in the US, Infinite Composite Technologies, who are taking our graphene dispersions and applying them to composite structures for enhanced performance for pressure vessel technology. So very demanding applications for our, our materials, but uh, where each end user is utilizing the advantage that graphene dispersions can bring to enhance their customer products. And you see that on slide nine in terms of product portfolio to date. Uh, I mentioned before, you know, our approach is to enable end customers to realize performance advantage, to be able to launch products and to see the revenue from that. And then for that revenue to be realized by our company uh, as well. So we see successful execution of the strategy that we have put in place um, to accelerate product launches. So on slide nine, um, we saw an, a small number of product launches in 2018. And we've seen that accelerate now in 2019 with uh, the products that I've been talking about, as well as um, a couple of others as well with infinite composites, as I touched on in the last slide. So great news for the application of graphene really starting to gain momentum in the areas of uh, of focus for for AGM. The highlights continued on slide 10. 
Um, commercial momentum, of course, is is our primary focus and um, the focus on product launches, the focus on uh, revenue generation, of course, is key to what we're about for a long range strategy. The other side of that and the balancing act has been cash conservation. Um, so the second part of the strategy, and it's been a major focus of uh, a realignment of the business uh, that we announced in October 2019. That focus has been very much around our dispersion technology um, and on customer support and service and how best we can service the customer to enable them to realise success and get their product applications across the line. Um, and that's embodied in the application technology that I uh, talked to earlier in this presentation. So just to uh, mention a little bit more about the resources realignment, uh, that process has been complete um, with a focus on business development, our technical teams to support long range product development, the rigorous testing that I touched on earlier, and also uh, focused customer engagement in terms of uh, the testing work that we do for specific customers to enable them to get their products across the line through the integration of our graphene materials. We've streamlined our manufacturing operations to focus on dispersion uh, capabilities and capacity, and that's enabled us to realise a cash runway out to at least quarter four 2021. Strategically, we also recognise that Asia has some enormous potential to be a core market for us um, for both graphene engagement in terms of product exploitation and the commercialization um, by combining the technology that we have uh, with a number of the, the graphene manufacturers and end users who are in seeking to incorporate graphene into their products. So a great opportunity there in the broad Asia region uh, we had positive engagement through presenting, having the privilege to uh, participate and present at IP Group's uh, Deep Tech Conference back in October. Um, that's created a, a, a large raft of opportunity and engagements that we have ongoing, ongoing currently. Of course, the current COVID-19 um, situation has delayed uh, some of that activity, but as we see um, companies starting to pick up the pace again in that region. We're now starting to uh, be able to engage more effectively with them again. Uh, financial highlights, uh, cash at the end of January was 4.3 million and uh, then the loss uh, before tax for the period, 2 million after tax. The key message, I think, the key barometer in all of this is product momentum as I've talked to and product launches with customers. The cash position is strong and uh, we see good progress going forward. To talk to the projects in the pipeline on slide 11, the key objective is to move our customers along the process of initial testing, uh, repeat testing for consistency and review of results, and then on to final product trials and formulation and specification, and of course, final commercial engagement. Um, we have 21 really positive engagements to focus on in the bottom left corner of this slide. And over the next six months, we expect to see further releases, news releases for the number of opportunities as more customers move towards product launch status. A strong focus, as I mentioned, is on coatings technology, and we're doing well in that regard. Um, to talk to slide 12, two case studies. Uh, first of all, with All Times Coatings, I mentioned them before, and we've done the hard yards, as I talked to earlier, in terms of introducing product to them, uh, getting that product integrated into their coating technology, and moving forward with product launch. Um, it's been a great process. We've got uh, a great engagement with uh, with that company, and they have now launched a product into the market, as I mentioned before, for the construction industry, specifically for roofing applications um, for uh, building and construction use. It could also be translated into other uh, corrosion applications as well for building structure. We also were able to demonstrate that real time um, 
using one of the buildings on the Wilton site where we are located and there's a nice video in the news section on our website to support that. Uh, demos like this become part of our sales approach and it's part of that truly exciting journey to introduce graphene to a broader uh, platform of opportunity. So some great examples going on with coatings and then in the advanced composites sector um, just to talk to the substantial opportunity that we have with um, with this uh, tooling application that we talk to. So a 10 meter long substantial uh, advanced fiber placement mold tool um, for use typically in aerospace application for, for example, the manufacture of things like uh, aircraft spars, wing ribs and so on. Um, it demonstrates the reality of graphene applied to real composite materials applications, um, in this case through printing technology, into the composite structure. It's been great to be able to demonstrate that in a real application and to be able to demonstrate ease of use of our graphene materials that could be easily applied both into the matrix resin or through our innovative structural ink printing technology. Um, to talk to the continuing commitment of uh, research and development, I was asked in an interview uh, yesterday with regard to uh, are we done with our data generation and certainly not. We continue the commitment to research and development and data progress in the areas of water-based environmentally friendly coatings using acrylics and epoxy chemistry and then looking at harsher uh, anti-corrosion environment um, situations with what's called C4, C5 and then CX or extreme corrosion environment coatings using our additive uh, and graphene dispersion technology and the know-how that we have in place to be able to achieve long-range objectives in uh, harsher and harsher anti-corrosion applications. We're also now able to bring the expertise that we have with barrier coatings and coatings performance um, into a broader platform of opportunity um, in areas like chemical resistance and coatings for a broader platform of opportunities rather than just steel and aluminium. So adjacencies to the work that we have done, we're now starting to see uh, great opportunities. The same message is also true of the in-depth technical data that we produce and the uh, to make that available to customers to enhance and maximize the opportunity for success. We're active on uh, an international platform for regulatory accreditation as well for safe use of our materials technology on an ongoing basis. So slide 14 shows the income statement where we can see there's an increase in revenues of 9,000 compared to the, the previous year and that's all come from, from new product sales. As you can see the EBITDA is 1.9 million which is down 300,000 compared to the previous period and that relates to reduction in, in staff costs and we, there was also an external R&D project that we were paying a company for that completed in the previous period. So that's 100,000 of the saving. And um, our IFRS 2 charges for share-based payments, that was down by 90,000. So that explains the reduction in the EBITDA loss figure for the period. The exceptional cost relates wholly to the, um, the realignment that we did in October. Um, and that's all done. And we don't expect any further costs to come through on that. And in a couple of slides, I'll have a, a bit more detail on, on that process. Encouragingly, we had strong sales in February 2020. So our year-to-date sales now are 20% higher than the whole year sales for, for the last financial year. So again, that's another nice sign that the momentum is starting to come through in, in our sales. Slide 15 shows our, our cash flow. Uh, the cash used in operations is, is right in line with the, the actual loss from operations. Uh, you can see the tax credit received from R&D tax credits of 623,000. Um, that relates to 2018. So we still have in our balance sheet um, a receivable of 700,000 relating to the financial year 19. And obviously in this current financial year, we are accruing more and more R&D tax credits. 
So these are a really important part of our, our cash flow. So at the end of January, we have 4.3 million on the balance sheet. So the realignment process was all about extending our cash runway, as we see on slide 16. We did this exercise in October, um, and it was really around realigning our operations so that we are looking very closely at product development with customers and really trying to exploit um, our dispersion technology. This led to extension of our cash runway because the operating annual costs going forward will be reduced by about a million pounds each year. And so that takes us out to um, Q4 2021 in terms of cash runway. As revenues develop, demand for the products develop, we'll be able to, um, to scale up our production capabilities as, as necessary to meet demand. Uh, to talk to slide 17 and the impact of uh, coronavirus currently on our business. So we have a strong cash base, uh, first of all. Um, and our cash forecasts are based on, as I mentioned earlier, very conservative revenue. So we're already operating um, in, a, in a good position. The, we had already implemented um, measures um, to, uh, to help people to work from home prior to the Prime Minister's announcement earlier um, about uh, further measures coming into play to, uh, to manage the situation. Um, so the majority of our staff are able to work from home. Um, items that are necessary to be done uh, away from the home environment, we have put in place um, a, a very good working practice uh, situation whereby we have a, a small number of staff still coming into the plant. We're able to operate in an isolated uh, basis, so to keep people safe and uh, so we are still open for business, we're still fulfilling uh, customer orders, and we're still managing our long-range um, customer, uh, customer engagements and the long-range R&D testing that we have ongoing. We will realise some cost benefits uh, through all of this. Clearly, we've tr uh, halted travel and uh, things like conference attendance that was being planned for the second half of the year has been postponed by organisers, so we will realise the cost benefit from that. Suffice it to say, while um, all this is going on, we see strong progress in the period, um, and we're using that as a really good platform to enable uh, engagement uh, on a, as an ongoing basis with our customers to further push forward with product launches that really just underpin and validate our strategy. So in summary on slide 18, we see some great progress. We're really pleased with the product launches that we've seen so far. As I mentioned, those underpin, they validate the work that we are doing with this graphene material, uh, utilizing graphene dispersion, utilizing our application technology and know-how, and continuing the focus. So we have an exciting pipeline um, that enables us to, to continue to move forwards um, through the difficult period that we see currently, but we're excited for the long range uh, prospects for the company. Uh, we have a compelling product portfolio we're making strong progress in our three core sectors of coatings and composites and functional materials. Products to market is increasing. We have an enhanced product offering um, that is supported with great product data, providing unique solutions and a significant uh, number of uh, focused customer engagements. Together with the strong technology base and the application technology that we offer is pretty well second to none. So that evolved focus is really starting to gain customer traction. Uh, the management team is focused on streamlining um, that focus onto commercial traction and revenues while managing our cash position. And as we talk to, the cash runway is solid out to uh, quarter four 2021. So I appreciate your time and thank you for listening and wish you well. Um, hope that you stay safe in these current challenging times. Thanks again. Bye for now.